the interviewer leans back, gives you a half satisfied, half suspicious look. They don't want to tell you that you did amazing, but you did. They're kind of jealous of you. So they hit you with another question. This one's much harder. When you see this question, you run. You run to YouTube and you Google this question. That's what you do. And you will find this video. And inside it are the answers that you need. This is all you need to answer this difficult question. What is the difference between REST APIs and GraphQL APIs? Very few people understand this. Only a select few. You are now one of those few. REST is a traditional HTTP API. It's a request response based API. The client makes a request, the server returns a response. That's it. I hope you like the colors. I think they make everything nicer to look at. GraphQL, on the other hand, is a query language. It allows you to specify the data you need exactly. There is no need to go back and forth with the server. You just have your list of things that you want, you go to the supermarket, you get all the stuff you want, and you come back. You don't have to deal with stuff that you want and stuff that you don't want, and then you filter out and go another round trip to the server. You don't do that. It's a query language, as if you got a database over there. REST is rigid. Often you require multiple requests to get the parts of the data that you are interested in. It's rigid. It's not flexible. GraphQL, on the other hand, is flexible, like we mentioned in the first point. You can get exactly the data you are interested in, in one single query. There is no need to go back and forth. Because of the two previous points, this leads to something called overfetching or underfetching. I don't know if it's officially called that, but this is what's going to happen. You're either going to request too much data or too little data. Too much data is going to require performance stuff from your end to parse and get rid of the stuff. And you've seen this before where you model the stuff that you want from the API with uh, retrofit and stuff like that. And then you have to exclude the things that you don't need. So what you do is you add a parameter name to the stuff that you are interested in. The stuff that you're not interested in, you don't parameterize it. So you don't have to do that with GraphQL, of course. Changing the structure of a REST API can be difficult because it requires a new version all the time. With GraphQL, you don't have to do that. You can just add new fields, modify new fields without having to release a new version of the API. GraphQL has a built-in type system. So you can tell it that this endpoint will take an ID of type int. You cannot pass an ID of type string anymore. Because the interface that you're dealing with the GraphQL API from the Android side will complain already. Apollo will not allow you to do this, nor will the endpoints, or there is no confusion as to what anything is. As opposed to when the REST API that you're used to, you know that it only fails, and it fails silently, when you pass something that you're not supposed to pass, and you don't know why it failed. You have to go and compare with the JSON that you're supposed to be sending with the one that you are sending. Or you get the one that you're receiving, the JSON, and then you're parsing and you're thinking that this ID is supposed to be string. And no, the guy has changed it to be an integer now. And it's going to fail on the Android side and there is no way to find out why unless you compare the JSON responses. I've had to suffer with this for a very long time in previous companies before I got introduced to GraphQL APIs. Now I will never go back, nor should you. You must say that GraphQL APIs are superior to REST APIs. If you say that, hey, well, it depends. No, not with me. GraphQL is better. The world is black and white. Gray areas represent ignorance. Oh, and REST API obviously does not have a type system built in. None whatsoever. Well, you could say the depends on answer. You could say that the REST API is much better suited for simple, predictable responses. Things aren't going to change a whole lot, right? You have a feed that you need to show. It's always going to have an ID of the article and the image and the stuff. You know that. It's, it's not going to change a lot. But when you're dealing with stuff that 
for example, the customer bought this and he then sold it and then his girlfriend resold it onto another brand. You need to combine stuff with intelligence to get back the useful data that you need. Yeah, no, you don't do that with REST APIs. At least that's from my experience on Android. It's so much easier to construct the uh, set of data that you need with GraphQL APIs. You can even have uh, like a mock uh, GraphQL, which is a mock thing that's linked to your database. You can test out the queries whenever you want. What's, it go what's this gonna produce? What's this gonna give me back? And then you can go on to make the actual call. So at the end, the difference is how they handle data requests. That's the core of, of how they differ. That's it for this difficult question. I believe it's easy to grasp the differences without even having tried it. Oh, but also, if you can try them, that would be much better. Okay, that's it. See you in the next one.